According to an informant, while powerful mob boss Charlie Luciano was incarcerated during the early 1940s, he was caught up in a prison riot. Let's check it out. I'm James Gladwish and welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today, we're going to take a quick look at the time Charlie Luciano was caught up in a prison riot. In the late 1960s, Lucchese crime family soldier Carmine Tagliatella turned informant for the FBI and provided a wealth of interesting information. Carmine Joseph Tagliatella was a member of Lucchese captain Paul Vario's crew. Other made men in this crew in the 1960s included the likes of Peter, Pete the Killer Abenanti, Salvatore, Babe Vario, brother of Paul, Alfonso, Fu, Curiali, Paolo, Zupaolo, Diana, and Luigi and Rosario Sacco, amongst several others. Sources indicate that in the late 1960s, Carmine Tagliatella fled New York due to owing a large amount of money that he had borrowed. He travelled to the West Coast, initially hiding out in San Francisco, and started providing the FBI's San Francisco office with information. Tagliatella would tell the authorities how he had spent three years in prison with Charlie Luciano, after Luciano had been moved from Dannemora Prison to the Great Meadow Correctional Facility in Comstock, New York. Carmine Tagliatella's FBI file states, On 1-17-69, SF Redacted PC was recontacted and advised that he spent three years in Comstock Prison in New York with Charles Lucky Luciano from 1942 until 1945. During this time, the source indicated that he, redacted information, race riot. He explained that the prisoners were involved in repairing camouflage nets for the armed forces. On this assignment, Negroes were placed side by side with Caucasian inmates, much to the resentment of many of the latter. As we can see, during the course of assisting the war effort by making camouflage nets alongside black inmates, tensions escalated from the white inmates towards the black prisoners. The file continues. On one occasion, the source became incensed about having to work next to them and, redacted information, a free-for-all. Luciano, who was present and emerged unharmed, felt renewed respect for the source as a result of his performance in this riot. From the file, it appears that Carmine Tagliatella was one of the main instigators of the prison race riot. In fact, I speculate that the word that is redacted in the file is in fact instigated. However, I can't understand why that word would be redacted. Anyway, according to Tagliatella, mob boss Charlie Luciano was present during the prison riot and was not harmed. And in addition, according to Tagliatella, his performance in the prison riot impressed Luciano and Tagliatella felt that Luciano had a renewed respect for him. Years later, after both Tagliatella and Luciano had been released from prison, the pair would meet up again. As is famously known, Charlie Luciano was deported to Italy after he was released from prison. In around 1961, Carmine Tagliatella travelled across the Atlantic and met up with Luciano. As the FBI file states, the source related that approximately eight years ago, he travelled to Italy to visit Luciano, who at that time was residing in Naples. Luciano greeted him with enthusiasm and conducted a tour of the Italian peninsula with him. While in Naples, Luciano drove the source to the ferry which carries passengers to Sicily. This was done while both were under surveillance by the Italian police. From what Carmine Tagliatella states, Charlie Luciano was very happy to see his old prison pal. Sources have indicated that Luciano was always very pleased to meet up with anyone from New York, particularly his old gangland friends. Tagliatella recalls that Luciano gave him a tour of the Italian peninsula and then drove him to a ferry that was heading to Sicily. Tagliatella states that at this time the pair were under police surveillance. The file continues. 
The source boarded the ferry alone and sailed to Sicily, where he was greeted by the Italian police, who demanded his passport. When the source produced it, the police demanded that he leave the island, and advised him that they were aware of who sent him, namely Charles Lucky Luciano. Whereupon the source returned on the next ferry and did not get the opportunity to tour Sicily. From Tagliatella's account, after he left Luciano and boarded the ferry and travelled to Sicily, he was greeted by the police and sent back to the mainland. The police stating that they knew who had sent Tagliatella to Sicily. If we are to believe this account, then it supports multiple sources that state that for his entire time in Italy, Charlie Luciano was in constant suspicion of criminal activity by the Italian authorities. And according to reports, Harry Anslinger, the chief of the United States Federal Bureau of Narcotics, had been determined for many years to link Luciano to the drug trade between Italy and the US. As Nev Morgan, author of Charlie Lucky, would write, If the constant harassment and surveillance weren't enough, Harry Anslinger sent in undercover agent Sal Bizzini, posing as US Air Force Major Mike Sierra, to try and get any kind of information from Charlie. Through Vizzini, the FBN hoped to develop accurate information about Charlie's legitimate and underworld interests in Italy and the US. Anslinger declared that he did not want any arrests made, only information linking Charlie to the drug trade between Italy and the US. Carmine Joseph Tagliatella would then go on to tell the authorities how important Charlie Luciano had been in the American Mafia. His FBI file states, SF Redacted PC described Luciano as Il Capo di Tutti Capi while he was in the United States, meaning that Luciano was the boss of bosses. He stated that since Luciano's departure, no one else had held that position. He credited Luciano with being the prime mover in organising La Commissione, which was designed to prevent further slaughter between the various factions. Despite the fact that Tagliatella referred to Luciano as boss of bosses, this is in fact inaccurate. Officially, this position no longer existed after the murder of Salvatore Maranzano in 1931. The position of boss of bosses was abolished. As an FBI file states, at this assembly, it was decided to replace the Capo di Capi with a commission, composed of six persons to govern the destiny of all the mafia of the United States. Carmine Tagliatella states that Charlie Luciano was one of the prime movers in implementing the commission. Although this is the commonly accepted theory, in fact, there was very much a commission type structure already in place for many years in the American Mafia, where bosses voted on many aspects of organised crime. But that is a subject for another video. Throughout his conversations with the authorities, Carmine Tagliatella would go on to talk about other mob events and individuals, including his fellow Lucchese mobsters Paul Vario and Carmine Tremonti. We will cover Carmine Tagliatella's full FBI files in a future video. Anyway, I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.